Have you ever thought about where each day starts? I mean, every day must start and end somewhere. And it does. Someone, sometime many years ago, decided that every day started at the international dateline. Let's have a look at the world. Here we've got um, America, North America. There we've got South America. Here we've got uh, Europe and Russia. Here we've got Africa, India. Then we've got Australia down here. Something like that. Here we've got little England. Somebody decided that the international dateline would be between Alaska, which is here, and Russia there. And so they drew a line. It's not a straight line. It goes something like this. And on one side of the line would be one day, on the other side of the line would be another day. So every day starts at the international date line. And the day goes traveling west. It goes all the way around the world until it comes back to the international date line. That means halfway around the world, there. It's half a day. So whatever time it is here, it's a, it's a 12 hours difference there. And it's 24 hours difference here. Now that means that when you're on the international date line here, here it may be Tuesday morning, here it'll be Monday morning. So when you cross that line, you have to add on another day. When you go the other way, you take away a day. So the day starts in the Far East, in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, and that's where the International Date Line is. Time has fascinated people for, since time began. Um, by the way, I forgot to say, this 24 hours is split into time zones. 24 different time zones. Each time zone is an hour. So if you're in London and it's 12 o'clock noon, in St. Lucia, you're over here, there are four hours time difference. So here you are, instead of 12 o'clock, you're only 8 o'clock in the morning. Whereas over here, you're already maybe 6 o'clock in the evening. So time does make a difference where you are in the world. But as I was saying, people have been fascinated by time for centuries. The first clocks, let me show you here. This is a very nice book called A Thousand Questions and Answers. The first clocks were probably things like water clocks, where they measured the water as it dripped out. Or they had hourglasses, where sand went from one glass to another. Other clocks were candles, where they marked the candles, and as the candle burned, they could tell how many marks had been burnt away. I suppose most of you know that there are 365 days in a year, but that's not quite true. There are 365.24 days in a year, which is almost a quarter of a day. That's why every four years we have a leap year to make, make up for that extra quarter of a day that we don't count every year. Four quarters makes an extra day. So every leap year, every four years, we have an extra day in February, a leap year. But, but the calendars, calendars aren't always the same, you know. The calendar that we use with 365 days is different from the Jewish calendar. It tells us here, it says, for international communications, the whole world does not uh, uh, does use the Gregorian calendar. It's called the Gregorian calendar. But other religions and traditional calendars are still used around the world. The Jewish calendar, for example, has a year that varies between 353 and 385 days. The Muslim calendar has either 354 or 355 days. 
and the Chinese calendar as another set again. But our calendar hasn't always been the same. Let me read you something more. Why was the year 46 BC known as the year of confusion? Julius Caesar was the first person to try to take account of the fact that the year is slightly longer than 365 days. So he instituted the Julian calendar of in 46 BC. But because the lack of leap years in previous years had made the year and seasons out of step, he decided that the first year of the new calendar should have 445 days. The difficulty that this caused made that year to be, to be named the year of confusion. What happened on the 5th of October in 1582? Well, in that year, Pope Gregory the 13th, I think it was, he decided to introduce a new calendar called the Gregorian calendar, and that's the calendar we use today. But to make it fit with the time and the seasons, he quite simply said, everything between the 4th of October and the 15th of October doesn't happen. So he just cut those days out, and then the calendar got back into step again. So the calendar we use today has 365 days and it's called the Gregorian calendar.